Okay, now we're going to take a look at defending against a hook. Um, here again, you have to know what tool is right for the job. And a lot of it depends on how you intend to follow up. The way this comes up is that he threw his cross and either landed or missed. But he, he uses his cross, in most cases, to get in to where he can throw his hook. That's what brings him into range. If he's out here where he can jab me across, he's not going to throw his hook. It's too far out. It would be foolish of him to do so. All right? But if I'm here and he actually throws the, throws the hook from out here, then it's very easy for me to just watch it go by and hit him on the counter with a cross. Or even as he's throwing it, boom, you know, my straight line defeats his arc. And there again, it just ends up being a bad idea. So the way he's setting up his, his hook is to get in, usually with his cross, to, to follow it up to the hook. So as he does this, we're here, and this is a position you should become real comfortable with this. It's, it's, it's feeling what it's like to have him right here, where we're both looking to land hooks. In this case, though, he got the initiative, and he throws that hook, and I'm gonna have to, I have to make a choice at this moment, whether I'm gonna keep my level or change my level. If I choose to keep my level, I have to block, okay? I can still see him, but my chin comes down even further than it was, so this whole side of my jaw is hiding inside my shoulder and armpit. I can see him, my elbow's in, I can keep it down as far as possible, although you'll find in Muay Thai, I'll keep it up a little more, in Western boxing, I'll keep it in real tight. So there is some play in there, depending on what you're doing and how he's attacking. But the block means I've kept my position and I can follow up, and usually, he won't be ready to block your hook after you just blocked his. Okay, often you may train it as a drill that way, but that doesn't mean that it will happen that way in a real fight. Usually he throws a hook and you kept your level and blocked, he will tend to be open for your hook. Now, changing level means you either duck it or weave it. So you get this, this shift of weight if you're going to weave a hook with the anticipation of coming up again and throwing your cross. I'm here, he throws his hook, and I weave and see how my weight shifts onto my rear foot again so I can come up with a cross. Okay? So we come in. He throws the hook. If I weave it, it's to put my weight on this foot so that I can then come back and throw the cross. But if I'm here, if, I, if I'm sort of semi in front of him or a little off the side, but instead of weaving, if I just duck it, then I might come up with a cross or I might come up with a hook. If my weight is 50-50, I can kind of shift a little bit to one side or the other. And it might be one or the other that I come up with. It's always a good idea to follow up. With. So program yourself ahead of time off any weave, any duck, to come up and throw two, three punches. Okay, so it tends to work like this. We get into position, he comes in, and if I weave, boom, two, three, two. So I don't just come up and throw one punch and then wait for him to hit back. As soon as I give a gap, he's gonna take it and he's going to punch back. So tell yourself, as soon as I move, I'm gonna come up and throw two, boom, maybe three punches, advancing on my cross so that uh, if I'm driving him back, I can still land my hook again in my cross. You'll find that the hook suckers him into the cross. He'll either come inside of there where you can hit him or he'll back out of the hook, which puts him right in line for your cross. Okay? So that's another reason why it's a really good idea to combine those punches that way. Because if the first punch didn't get him, the second punch may, the third punch probably will if you keep going.